And speaking of chunking errors, something kind of really cool happened, entirely unintentional, when I gave uh, BCD113 the, uh, the map at one point. Um, now, he was working on his own world back in the day. Oh, and another thing I did mention about um, early alpha builds is that you could only have five worlds per Minecraft uh, game. And they were only labeled one through five. Now, this world back in my, my day was World 1. And BCD had also built a world of his own when he was playing the game for the first time, called World 1. Now, the weird chunking glitch that had happened, and gosh, you can even see some of the loading errors that are happening now. Uh, we'll, we'll have to bear with it. Uh, the weird thing that would happen in the games was that, um, when I saved, when I gave him my file, um, and it was labeled World 1, when he unzipped it, apparently his world that he was using in his game somehow merged with mine, and somehow this and this whole section right here was just chunked right off, and everything that you see from here on out became BCD's world. I mean, let's see what uh, BCD has to say about this. So, my world ends, and his begins. It was a really weird glitch, but it was so cool! I don't think Minecraft's ever done anything quite like that again, and fortunately it's good that no one's worlds are getting erased. But these are builds that Brennan built before I even started the game, so this section of the map is honestly older than mine. Um, yeah, so if we go over here, we can actually see some of VCD's oldest builds. Oh, hello, cow. You're loud. Not as loud as you used to be, though. Now, I don't think there's much to see here in total, and BCD can totally correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I think it's worth showing that really the bizarre nature of Minecraft and, and how glitchy it was back in the day made itself prone to situations like these. Yeah, here's an ancient mine. I, I gosh, I'm not going to go explore everything, um, but I would like to find, yeah, here we go. I think this is a very old BCD base, and again, I don't think there's much to it. But, uh, yeah, it's all empty and everything. Jeez, look at all these doors. I feel like I'm in a druid's house. Oh, you know what this actually reminds me of? All these weird chunking error glitches? Way back in the day, there used to be a version of Mine uh, of an extreme glitch in Minecraft, um, which generated very bizarre ge uh, geography if you went to the outer fringes of the world itself. And they were called the Far Lands. Uh, basically, the world generation algorithm stopped functioning the way they were supposed to be, and all these weird spires would show up, and the game would get super glitchy, and the physics would alter. Um, unfortunately, I never got to see the, the Far Lands with my own eyes. But back in the day, I, I really didn't have a very powerful computer. I was running a Mac. Um, so unfortunately, I never quite had the ability to explore that in full. Um, another thing that we never quite got to finishing uh, was that BCD113 was doing another build back here, uh, the Cliffside Manor, which was built into one of the chunking errors that uh, we encountered in the game. Uh, and this was, I think, was was eventually going to be built into a replica of Luigi's Mansion. There were the inner workings of things that never quite got built, so it's kind of weird to see all these unfinished construction projects hanging out around here. But it, it, it serves as a reminder as to what the world was and what potential there could be for the game. Whoa, I did not mean to come down here. Ah, and this, uh, that tunnel that you see down there? Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe I can get a better look if I... Yeah, there's the stairs. And this tunnel that you see here is the opposite end of the rail transit system. The railway never quite got built all the way down here because I don't think we necessarily found all the iron we needed, but this is the opposite end of the railway in conjunction with uh, Chateau de Chicken, which is way off into that distant horizon. Now, there is another thing that I wanted to show you guys too, um, and that's the um, the nether system that we built. Now, the nether system is really cool. It was a system that actually Exo, of all people, built the most out of, if I, uh, if I recall correctly. Um, if we take a look into, honestly, what's kind of a spooky place in retrospect. And I didn't leave anything in there. We can take a look into here. We used to call the nether hell, 
but uh, I guess we got used to calling it the Nether, and we switched to its official terminology. Um, so, the Nether was something that was introduced in the first Halloween update, and it was one of the coolest things. I don't remember why I built all these cactuses here, other than perhaps to remind myself where the exit point was. Yeah, that's probably it. So the Nether was something that was introduced uh, way back in Alpha in uh, October 2010. And I was terrified of this place at first, because as soon as you enter the place, you would hear all these ghastly calls. They were called ghasts, these big floating white lumps. Um, and there was another glitch that was occurring back in the day, wherein ghasts, if they touched anything like lava, they would get themselves horribly, horribly maimed. And make constant shrieking sounds, even though they weren't actually getting hurt. So, my first venture into the nether rack, and a lot of, or into the nether, and a lot of people's first ventures into here, yep, there's a gas right now, was the cacophony of screams. Alright. Whoa. Well, everyone, we made it to the nether. What was that? Jeez, this place is loud! You know? <gasps> That's it. That must be what's causing the screaming sounds. Jeez! Which, in retrospect, is... I don't know, I was, I was so afraid of the nether the first time I came into the map, I actually threw my headset to the ground because I couldn't bear the noise. So when you hear me playing for the first time, my headset was on the floor. Uh, in retrospect, that is a little bit embarrassing, but that is something I did want to get off my chest. And my original um, exit point, or entrance point for the nether was actually this uh, base over here. Now, the ghasts and other such creatures could not get into places that were completely fortified, so by building an observation deck here, I could safely enter and exit the nether. But once you enter the nether itself, all bets are off. Because the gas could shoot fireballs at you, and if they shoot you, they could hurt you, they could damage structures. They can't damage cobblestone, but they could damage things like, you know, anything wooden-based here would be a terrible thing to build. But, nonetheless, it was worth exploring. So, I didn't spend that much time in the nether, but Exo sure as heck did, and a lot of the structures down here are things that I can show you. Uh, because, honestly, they're kind of cool. Um... Oh yeah, I guess, I don't remember if I did this or if VCD did this, but they tried to build a tree farm down here, and for obvious reasons we can see why it failed. There's not enough space in here for these trees to go properly. And I guess this was a mine for a netherrack that was never quite fully used. Um, I guess if you go back to my older videos, you might be able to see who built this place, but I don't think it was me. And if you go all the way down to the lowest area here, there's another um, secondary exit point. Because most of my nether operations took place on this lower ground level. Uh, when I first entered the nether, I sort of wound up spawning on top of a plateau. Up there. And, uh, I guess that's a way up if you didn't want to take the... The, lat uh, the doorway here. Although the doorway proved itself to be a lot safer. Um, and my first exit from the nether led me through to this doorway here, which unfortunately I don't seem to have the tools to open. So, oh wait, no, there's a door here. And this exited out of Hellgate 2. You saw earlier when I entered uh, the nether that I exited through Hellgate 3, and this is the, that was the third gate that I built. The second gate that I built was here. And this first exit point actually brings you far away from home. Uh, what you may not know about the nether, or I mean, if anyone's played the game by now, you probably know, uh, is that the nether, the further, you, uh, the space between the nether is magnified um, compared to the space um, outside on the overworld. If you exit the nether and you travel a fair amount of space, I think one block that you travel counts for ten blocks on the overworld. So, we're quite a bit of ways from home right now, considering all the traveling that I've done before. Uh, and wait, and I've only ever been to this place once in my um, playthrough, but I think it's kind of cool to go back because this is where I had to build a shelter before I decided to work my way back slowly back to ba home base. And I think if you follow the torches, it'll show you. Maybe we'll do that on the way back, I don't know. Um, some long-forgotten things, six years old, left behind this room. 
Uh, let's go back into the nether, because there's something else down there that we weren't finished exploring yet. I wanted to show you something that Exo built. And for the life of me, I still don't know how Exo executed the vision. Yeah, here we go. So Exo built basically what amounted to a transit system here, where the, he put a whole bunch of um, portals in a row, and he took the liberty of naming these uh, portals based on the locations they were at. See, here's a desert, and Exo did not want me to travel down this area, but I'm defying six-year younger Exo. There's an interesting cave. Let's speed things up a little bit. I guess he didn't bother to label these areas, because we never quite explored all of these different um, portal areas. And I guarantee you, if I try to go through these portals now, um, they would not lead to the places they were intended to go to. Um, so many different updates have occurred to the game that if I tried to go through these portals now, they would probably lead to entirely newly generated biomes, and I don't necessarily want to do that. That being said, there were a few places down here that were worth sort of peeking our heads into. Places that we've previously been to. Um, gosh, this is a huge transit system. Oh, hi, Ghast. Um, I guess we didn't realize it at the time, but this makes the world absurdly big. Yeah, there's grassland here. Like, ridiculously, absurdly large. This is a fairly large file that I loaded from. Ah, here we go. Uh, there's, there's a couple of stops that I wanted to show you on the way on the transit system. And this one, I believe, was something that Exo built. Uh, very, very early in the game, he built a, um, a little place here on the island called Sailor City. Um, and I guess I wouldn't really use the world word built, because he didn't really do anything with this island. But um, if you remember from um, from Village Madness, this is the place where I left uh, Miracle World when uh, we discovered um, my ship had been, or the um, Donovan's ship had been built. And there's a portal right there. What the heck is that? So this is that little island, but it's quite a ways away from a lot of the other things that had gone on on the map. Uh, returning back to the transit system, or I guess the tunnels, um, one of the things that I, I think was really one of the most impressive things that I've ever seen Exo do in this game was the glass um, octahedron. Uh, and if we go a little bit of a further ways out here... Yep, there it is. I have no idea how Exo built that. I guess he wanted to build that as a uh, hub for a lot of these other sections here. Um, towards the end of the original uh, Minecraft, uh, or rather the original Minecraft uh, playthrough, uh, I think we, we knew we wanted to do multiplayer. Oh my god, what are you? You are a horrifying little beast. Um, well, that's neat. I lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. So, back in the day, when we were recording uh, the original Minecraft series, we knew that the adventure was soon going to end. And Exo wanted to build a really, really large map so we could build villages on it as a group. Eventually, we decided to start an entirely new map, and that eventually turned into uh, Village Madness. But back in the day, we eventually were planning on building everything on this map. And, I don't know, maybe that would have worked, maybe it wouldn't have, but that that's sort of how the cookie crumbled. So, I've already sort of lost which direction I came from. Okay, so I came from this direction. Uh, toward hub, portals on left. I think there was one other thing I wanted to show you guys, and it was down this pathway, if I'm not mistaken. By the way, a lot of the creepers that you see here and a lot of the spiders here are not vanilla. I'm currently running our film pack, um, mod pack, uh, just to make it a little bit easier for me, because... <clears throat> Lately, I've been having trouble getting the original version of Minecraft to function properly. So, I've been using this version of Minecraft to basically make the game run. So, way at the end of this tunnel here is this solitary little cabin room. Oh, hey, this is still lit. Cool. Uh, I hope it doesn't burn down anything. So, everyone, um, at the very end of the Nether Tunnel, at the farthest reaches of Miracle World, this is farther than anything else in the game that I have seen. Um, is this little, relatively humble cabin out here in the woods, in the snowy area. And I built this place for the holidays, because I thought it would be kind of cool to have a little winter cottage. Now, 
I mean, the novelty of this sort of thing has kind of worn off in the days since, because biomes are kind of a dime a dozen, but back in the day, worlds were only one biome. There was nothing more than just the one biome that you spawned. But after an update into beta, the game allowed for multiple biomes, including this winter tundra biome. And this was, again, a new thing at the time. Um, so, I thought it'd be kind of cool to build a little winter cottage here. I think this this cottage was entirely my creation. Obesity might have been here at one point, um, but um, relatively speaking, it was a creation of mine. Um, and I don't know, there's just something about a warm, cozy fireplace and a wooded house um, that just it speaks to me. And of course, I filled the place up with chickens because I'm a freak. But that's what I do. And although not really much to see, then just a little fun, humble thing to do on the side, I guess. Um, that only leaves one major thing left in the game to really check out. Miracle Peak. 